which pet insurance is best for dogs. In today's video, I speak with the co-founder of FirSure, and she shares with us some tips that will not only save you more money, but actually get you better coverage. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Now consider subscribing if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews, as well as connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of bostonterriersociety.com. Over there is my sleepyhead little Bella in her normal spot. Now today I have a special guest on and I really wanted to get her on this channel because I have a lot of people asking, you know, what type of pet insurance should I get for my Boston Terrier? Now there are a ton of factors that go into that. So it's hard to give a definitive like, oh, for you, you should get this policy. Catherine, who's gonna be on the interview with us, she's the co-founder of FirSure. It is a pet brokerage company. And with her website, you can actually go in, put your dog specific information, and it'll give you a side-by-side -side comparison of all the different pet insurance companies that are operating here in the United States, which is fantastic because this literally allows you to get the most coverage for every penny that you're gonna spend on pet insurance. Now, links to Catherine's website are gonna be in the show notes below, as well as other articles that she mentions here in the interview. Those will be in the show notes as well. All right, let's get into the interview. Catherine, thank you so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Could you just tell me a little bit about yourself and the company that you helped start? Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Donnie. Excited mm -hmm. to be here. So I'm Catherine. I'm dog mom to a mini red tri Australian Shepherd who is currently pawing out my foot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the co-founder and CEO of this company called For Sure. So we're a pet insurance broker for pet parents. We help pet owners across the US find the best option to protect their dogs and cats with insurance. So I, I had a cat named Simba and he ended up being diagnosed with lymphosarcoma. So can Answer, and treatment cost $12,000. I was in college at the time. I just felt like an idiot because I had no idea that A, cats could get cancer <laughs> yeah. and B, that, that it ever would even have cost it in the ballpark of what it ended up being. And I didn't have the money at the time, didn't have extra time to be working a job while going to school. And, and it was just really brutal because at that point, really what should have been a medical decision was very much a financial one. And Simba right. ended up passing away within a week of being diagnosed. Pretty traumatizing. Sorry, and, yeah, yeah. Fast forward years later, I was volunteering at a shelter here in the Bay Area where I'm based. And I just kept hearing pet owner after pet owner talk about how expensive bills had gotten to the point where they're also basically being forced to place a monetary value on their pet's lives. Yeah, it, it was just crazy to hear that a lot of people had had very similar experiences experiences. So I knew that I was really passionate about solving for a problem in the pet healthcare space. I just didn't know exactly what. Around the same time, I actually got Zushi, my, my little Aussie. I love that um, name. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I was just looking into pet insurance. I had no idea that it existed back then. So I was just researching, going down like a rabbit hole. I had asked a couple of friends about what they thought about it, asked my vet, and, and it was just crazy. Like I, I was still confused. So I decided to like basically <laughs> buckle down. I don't know if I would recommend this to everyone, but I buckled down and I like spent what felt like a hundred hours, like reading all of the fine print of all the different providers to find what was the best decision for me and Zushi. And at this point I was like, this is insane. Someone should solve this problem. Like ultimately all we care about is just figuring out what's right for us. And so I decided to start for sure. And so that's what we do. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I actually found you through LinkedIn. You posted an article on LinkedIn and I went to your website and I'm like, this is awesome. That's awesome. Could you just tell me a little bit like what are the benefits in going to a pet broker than just going to a random insurance company? Yeah, of course. So I would say there are pretty few resources online that aren't biased. And I say that as in a lot of brands want to push their one company and it makes total sense. But for pet owners that want to know what their options are across everything without having to do hours and hours of endless research, like I think that's the biggest value add is it's not, it's company agnostic. The other thing to keep in mind is there are a bunch of review sites and a number of other places where you can get information, but it's actually fairly stale. Going with a broker or going with someone who like this is our whole job is to make sure that people have the information that they need. I think that's another uh, another good option. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what we what we think is really important here is giving personalized advice to pet parents to help them make a decision that they feel really confident in. Because ultimately, it's a decision that you'll probably stay with for a while. So a broker also gets to be the voice of the customer as opposed to any specific pet insurance company. Right. And I think I've looked into this before, as far as pet brokers, I'd written an article on Boston Terrier Society, just because yeah. the same thing with Bella's insurance, which we ended up going with a pet savings plan. 
it was just hard unless you gave out your email to, you know, seven different websites and that thing. Can you just tell me a little bit like what makes your website or company stand out among the rest of the brokers, I guess? We're free, um, free to pet owners, like always, always. Uh, and then we're also very personalized. I think that's a big piece there is your price. And, and I can get into all the factors of insurance and all the like nuggets and gotchas and tidbits. But ultimately, because you want to know what's right for you and across all the options that I think that personalized aspect is really important. Also, we just have long-term relationships with our customers, like as opposed to just like a one-time transactional relationship. It really is like an ongoing one where we help with other questions related to like dog, dog mom, dog dad life. Yeah, I've seen your blog. You got a lot of articles on the blog as well. Yeah. And then I would say like the one other thing uh, that is is unique, and I hope that we can keep this for as long as possible, is we offer a like a consultation, like a free phone call, essentially, where like mm-hmm. everyone else just kind of focuses on showing quotes and just leaving you to figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. And we also kind of rank our top two options based on all the coverages that's out there, as opposed to just leaving you to figure it out on your own. Okay. Yeah. Because I ran through uh, with Bella because I just wanted to test it out and everything. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And you can flip through the different insurance companies as well see all their information. I had a question for you. Now I'm rethinking it, but but so is pet insurance for everyone? Yeah, I think it's a really good question because no, like I think that there's, there are buckets of people that it doesn't make sense for. And I can talk a little bit about that for some, well, first off, if you are someone that can withstand multiple catastrophic vet bills, I'm talking like $10,000 or more, mm-hmm. and you can afford to like self-insure. Like, I don't think any plan is really necessary for you. Cause that's just like a very, very specific type of person. Mm-hmm. There's also, I think a, a category of people, which I'm sure that your viewership is not in this bucket, but if you're willing to give your dog up at the first sign of like an expensive vet bill, like pet insurance also doesn't make sense as a longer term investment. Right. And I think, I think when it comes down to it, like the real question that we're all asking ourselves is, should I do pet insurance or should I just have like a rainy day fund or like a savings account? Mm -hmm. And I think that there is a world in which if you just put away the money that you would have otherwise been spending on insurance into that fund that you could come out like on top, there is a world in which that's the case. I I just like want to share a story where I had a friend that had two French bulldogs and the first Mm -hmm. Frenchie had no issues like his entire life and was totally healthy and fine, like up Mm -hmm. until the very end, actually like completely healthy. And it was amazing. And then the second Frenchie that she had, they racked up $30,000 in vet bills in the first three years because the dog kept getting sick. And it's just like seeing that juxtaposed that way in in one household, it's just insane. So you're just kind of protecting against like the unlucky downside in Mm -hmm. in that case. And so you could either go with a, like a pet savings plan or a pet insurance plan. I think we see a combination of actually both is like the most effective, just Mm -hmm. so you feel really confident that you're able to like deal with something if something were to ever happen, knock on wood, it doesn't. Right. Yeah. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I've talked to people within the Boston Terrier Society community just over like general health issues with Boston, which relatively they are a healthy breed. But I've talked to people mm-hmm. who have had tons of issues and they're the people that are like, man, I wish I would have bought insurance. So it's always one of those, you know, catch 22 things. You wish you would have bought it once all this bad, all the bad stuff happens. I know. Um, and you just like kick yourself for not getting it sooner, but it is just one of those things where it's kind of, it's just tough to know. Like for me with Simba and I think with so many people with their, with their pets, you just don't think about it until it happens to us. Right. Like you just, you don't predict that anything unexpected will happen, which is like by default. But, but I think to your point also on, on pet insurance and whether it's for everyone, I, I think from all of that and, and just hearing stories and having experienced it myself, I just realized that I would rather pay a small amount per month mm-hmm. so that I don't have to worry about not having stacks of 10 grand lying around. <laughs> um, and at least like, at least for me, it was the right decision. I definitely consider Zushi to be like my little son. So this is like my little health insurance plan for my kid. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I just wanted to hop in. If you're enjoying this interview and you want to see more interviews like this, be sure to subscribe to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from us. All right, back to the show. Well, as far as like uh, getting health insurance from the get-go, you know, should someone get health insurance as a puppy? Would it be cheaper if they did it that route? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Okay. So this is another one of these counterintuitive things where you think, oh, like he or she is a puppy. I shouldn't get anything now. Now is actually the best time. I think there are a lot of new dog owners out there. And I went through the same thing with Zushi. Like I love him so much, but he's a little idioto. Like he likes to put everything in his mouth, like <laughs> run, like sprint. Cause he's an Australian shepherd. Like it's his last day on earth. And yeah. he actually started limping when, when he was really young. And I was terrified. Cause I also mm-hmm. can't tell me what's wrong across the board from pet insurance, because none of the 
companies in the U.S. cover pre-existing conditions. So once something happens, Mm -hmm. no company in the U.S. for pet insurance will cover that one condition if you get insurance after that happens. And that's a huge gotcha that most people don't know until it like bites you down the line where you you have been paying diligently for years and then something happened that before you got coverage doesn't, doesn't get covered. Like that's super frustrating. So it's the best time to get it when they're puppies before anything has a chance to happen or develop. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, like you said, it is cheaper. That being said, prices are not locked in. You just lock it in for the year that you have the policy. And what I would expect to happen for for puppies is for the first three years, the price would stay the same. And then you'd start to see slight increases at at age like four or five, six, Mm -hmm. and then it would be expensive when they're older. But really how we think about it is it's like a long-term decision for the, for the lifetime of your pet. Okay. As far as like an average price range, and I know there's many, many variables, but what would be like an average price range, maybe for a Boston Terrier? And I know I didn't like prep you for this question, but (laughs) specifically. Okay. So I think the price here too, is something that we have no idea how to anchor or benchmark at all until you've spent some time digging into it. Mm -hmm. And then also all the prices across providers really vary. So Mm -hmm. I would say for, for dogs, it ranges from anywhere as low as $25 per month, Mm -hmm. all the way up to like 70 per month, or even 80, I've seen 80, a hundred, 150 per month. I just would not Mm -hmm. recommend. I think that's a little excessive. I would expect for a, a dog owner to pay between 30 and 50 a month. Of course, like I can talk about the prices and how they factor in, but I think that's like a helpful benchmark. Mm-hmm. And for cats, you, it would be- Do you have a resource on your blog that I might be able to put in the show notes? Yes. I okay, I'll put that in the show blog. notes for people. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So prices, just for anyone, if they're curious, are based on your pet's age, mm-hmm. breed, zip code, and gender. And so it's basically where you live. They're trying to like triangulate that costs in that area. And then to your point, some breeds are more expensive than others because they're more prone to health issues. For someone who's thinking about getting pet insurance, what are maybe three tips that you could offer them? Tip number one, don't buy a plan just because it's the cheapest. (laughs) You see that price and you're like, oh, this is perfect. But ultimately the coverage is really what you want, um, especially down the line when you need it the most. It's also much easier to downgrade your plan than it is to upgrade. So I would say start off with the best plan that you can afford. Number two, prices, of course, they vary across the providers, but there's also subtle coverage differences between the different providers. So there's around 20 providers and brands in the US today, and they all have various like nuances. And of course, they're going to like spray loud and proud the things that they do cover, but then it's kind of hard to compare. Um, So there aren't that many great like side by side comparisons. But something that I would note there is some cover dental and some don't. Some cover behavioral behavioral therapy and and some don't. Some cover exam fees and some don't. So just keep in mind these subtle coverage differences. And then tip number three. So your price is not locked in. It is going to increase because dogs like humans, they get sicker as they get older. Mm -hmm. And also there's rising vet costs and inflation. So expect it to change, not stay the same throughout the lifetime of of your pet. Uh, And I would say lastly, if you also don't want to spend hours and hours researching as I did, we would love to help any uh, any of your followers that are looking into pet insurance, especially for their Boston Terriers and see what their options are. We'd love to help them out on our Great. website. And, well, and you said, so you have that free hotline that they can use as well. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah, okay. basically, they, yeah, they can go to getforsure.com slash sign up and schedule a call with myself or someone on our team um, to talk about their best options. Yeah, because I think like a lot of employers are now offering in their benefits package pet insurance. So then that might even be different from, I guess, those 20 providers that are throughout the U.S., Exactly. Did you see a difference in those? Did they offer better perks? Yeah. So, so the way that it works in employer benefits and perks as it stands today mm-hmm. is typically the company will pick one provider that they go with. And so you just have that one option set, uh, but they will have a discount. So it'll be like at a group discount or it'll take okay. out of uh, your paycheck. So there's not a ton of employer sponsored like fully and completely, but I'm hoping that that will be the case in the coming mm-hmm. years. Cause I think it's so important. Pets like bring so much joy to our lives, especially now with mm-hmm. this crazy year um, <laughs> of COVID. I think pets are just like such a shining light in our lives right. and they mm-hmm. matter so much to us. Yeah. And they matter to our happiness. So hopefully employers can, can do their part. To, to sponsor that. <laughs> Catherine, thank you so much for coming on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Now, if you're someone who's thinking about getting pet insurance, 
definitely go check out Catherine's website. The links are gonna be in the show notes below. So it'll take you over to FirstSure, where you can actually then compare different pet insurances. So you're not doing all that legwork of going to different companies to figure out which is the best for your pet. You can just have them all laid out there right in front of you. So the links are gonna be in the show notes below as well as the other blog articles that she mentions. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from us. If you want to learn more about Boston Terriers and why they're the best dog breed in America, I might be a little biased, you can check out this video here or one of my latest videos here. Otherwise, until next time, life is better with a Boston.